Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Big Blue House. The doors are open, so come on in and meet me, Aidan Henderson, your host. And that song might have given you the biggest clue to who our guest, our legend, the puppeteer of the bear from Bear in the Big Blue House that you might remember from when it did nine series over nine years until 2006 in the UK on Playhouse Disney is the amazing Noel McNeil. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me and hi everybody out there. Now, can you tell everyone what the time is, where you are and what the weather's like? Okay, so currently it's uh, Monday, February 8th. It is about, oh, 1.15 in the afternoon, New York City time, because I live in Brooklyn, New York. And it's a lovely, like, I think it's like currently like 24 degrees, but it feels like 12 because of the wind chill. Now, I'm not sure how you convert that, but think, I don't know, three? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's just like, it's cold. It's cold, it's sn there's snow outside, it snowed again yesterday. We're expecting another mm -hmm. snowstorm tomorrow. So this is like the snowiest we've had in like, years so i actually had to buy boots which i haven't had to do in like something like 10 years so it's like it's wow. been snowy but it's, and here but it's, it, yeah. it, it is 6 16 in the evening here in scotland and we are going to talk about how you get into being an all-round engineer entertainer puppeteer and legend and also someone that inspires lots of different people throughout the years and inspiring their kids as well by people encouraging their young people to watch this really friendly and engaging bear that has a really nice tone for young people just to listen to and engage, especially during these tough times when they need someone like him just to cheer us up and make us feel better. Um, yeah, it's like, um last year was really like a um let's see last year was kind of well sucked so um it was it was interesting how bear was able to to, mm -hmm. to cheer people up and come back at the or the right time um i uh have this bear puppet it's a puppet of a puppet mm -hmm. so it's a puppet of bear yes it's not the, the one from the, the show yes it was made for me by a very good friend of mine and so i used it for um uh, cameos that, that little service where if you want to have like yes. somebody like wish you like happy birthday or anniversary so I've done that and then Remember, my if son, you want a cameo from Noel he will be on cameo and you can <laughs> go to cameo.co.uk and get one from him yes and so then with this puppet my son who's 15 going on 42 he said dad you should you should bear on tiktok and I said what's a tiktok and after a very patronizing two minute explanation of what it was, he said, you should use bear. And I said, why should I use bear? It's like, because people remember bear, like, like uh, millennials and kids my age. I was like, okay. So I, I thought, okay, what the heck, you know, I'm in lockdown, why not? <laughs> it's something to do and put up a little video. And I was gobsmacked at the reaction of like so many people suddenly yes. like recognizing and so glad he was back. And my son wished that we would have like a dollar for every time the word childhood was used. Because <laughs> he said, you could pay for my college education at this point because people have said, oh my gosh, it's my childhood. Oh, well, thank you for my childhood. I remember this from my childhood. This is the best part of my childhood. <laughs> again and again and again. Yeah. So um, it was, it was very, it's very gratifying that people still like appreciate and remember Bear and his, his uh, little friends. So um, yeah, I'm on like the TikTok and cameos and I get to do like really fun little interviews like this and yes. get to say hi to people from like, and do you have bear with you just now huh do you have bear with you just now oh yeah he's he's, he's like over there standing by he's <laughs> like I thought maybe you and I could talk first and like <laughs> yes that'd be okay and I just said for the young people could you please just say there is some young people here that know who you are and others that don't know who you are so could you just give up all round explanation of what Bear in the Big Blue House was about and what the meaning behind it is? Uh, well, first, me is uh, the fact that I may be a, a professional puppeteer. So that's what I chose to do. And I got to um, learn and work beside a man named Jim Henson, because my first job 
was taking care of the puppets on Sesame Street. So I got to meet Jim and Frank Oz, who was the puppeteer behind Miss Piggy and Yoda and Cookie Monster. And, uh, and then I became a background puppeteer. And then I puppeteered on like other shows and commercials and movies. And then I got a call to come on audition for this new show from the Jim Henson Company that was going to be on Disney Channel, on uh, uh, the, the kid portion of Disney Channel. Yes. And so I, uh, they faxed me, that's right, faxed me the, <laughs> the, the script and the, a drawing of what this character looked like. And it was this bear with all these little characters beside him. It's like, oh, he looks cute. So it was a Friday afternoon mm -hmm. and I went and around, got there around like 4.30. And I, as soon as I walked in, um, the executive there said, uh, use your own voice. And I was like, what? We're the Muppets, we don't do that. And he said, no, no, use your own voice. And that was because this was 1997, which was March of 1997. And at that time, there was this character called Barney. And so they wanted Bear to sort of not be like this big character with a goofy really? voice and a very cartoony voice. He just, they wanted Bear to just have this sort of very natural, like warm adult voice. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. And so at that time, before I was even married or had a kid, I called my Uncle Noel mode. So whenever I would visit friends with the kids, I kind of like go into this like, what do you want to do? It's like, okay, let's play that. And just like, just whatever you're up to. Then it also said in the script that uh, Bear, um, you know, smells something and then smells the viewer. And so I realized once I got into the prototype, it was like the, it, it, was, it was the puppet, but it wasn't covered in fur or anything. It was just like foam head and the, the understructure, but it felt really good. It felt really fun. And I thought this would be really, really fun to do. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, wait a minute, it's quarter to five, it's Friday afternoon. You're the last person they called at the last minute. It's like, they just want to cover their bases. It's like, you're not going to get this. So I was like, eh, you know what? I'm just going to have fun. So that's why I just like ran around and like jumped up and down. And when it was time to sniff the camera, that's when I just jammed the nose all the way in and pulled it out again and with the sniffing. And I was like, well, that was fun. And then the weekend went by and then that Monday, just before six o'clock, I got a call and they said, we would like you to be Bear. Wow. And I said, what? <laughs> and that's how I got the part. And we did uh, four seasons and Bear got to be at uh, a pier at, um, at a show at uh, the Disney MGM Studios in <laughs> Walt Disney World. And then at California Adventure, um, there was a live touring show that toured the United States and then also toured uh, the UK. Mm -hmm. And I actually got to visit uh, the UK a couple of times to promote um, the show because at that time, yes. Bear was not only on Disney Channel, but he was also on Channel 5 on a segment called Milkshake. And yes. so he was um, seen in two places. So he was very popular. And so mm -hmm. I got to go to the UK a couple of, actually just London, never got a chance to go to Scotland. Or to Ireland. <laughs> didn't you not go? I heard in another interview, didn't you get to go to a mall just outside of London and they made all that Disney store made all of its money from the holiday season in that one day because there was people in different oh, yeah. floors the whole oh, time. Oh, yeah, different floors up. And it was just like they had like a little stage set up. And it, it was, it was, it was always surprising like how many people would come. Mm -hmm. And so we drove out there. And then just before going out, we just saw like, they came back and said, there's just, there's so many people. <laughs> and so I was like, so made a little path so that Bear could go, go on the stage. And then just like all of these people down below. And then there was like three levels mm -hmm. of the mall and there were just people lined up. And so I did like a little 20 minute show. And then afterwards, um, we probably, probably do like little photo mm -hmm like meet and greet there was no way you could do that <laughs> no. and so on the way back it became like what I called like you know um, the president's line so like as Bear walked down he would like say thank you and like smile and people would take but just kept moving keep moving keep moving yes. keep moving keep moving and uh yes and then they had and that was to promote the, the new merchandise that had come to that mm -hmm. uh mall's Disney store and they not only sold out of all the Bear merchandise 
but as you said, they made the profits that they would have made the entire Christmas season mm -hmm. in one day <laughs> because of this fuzzy character that came to the mall and people just immediately uh, started shopping. There was um, a flagship Disney store here in New York on Fifth Avenue and it was like yes. three floors and Bear was going to make an appearance there too. It's the like, same thing just to promote it. And they had promoted it to the tri-state area. And so mm -hmm. with little flyers. And so they expected, they, we went there and they had um, the board and they had like the plan of like, people would line up here and this would be the meet and greet. And if people want to like leave, they will give them the number so you can know back where the place is online. It was like, okay, sure. How many people are you expecting? It's like, oh, I was playing about probably like 200 people. It's like, okay. <laughs> Almost 3000 people showed up. To the point oh, where they had to close in that one room. It was like, and they had to close the store twice. They couldn't let anybody else in because wow. Bear was doing like two appearances, and they had to close the store twice. They totally underestimated like how many people were going to show up for this, and so it was. It was that was always fun to this just to meet uh, kids and adults. Actually, it was the first time I ever did it was at the Disney MGM Studios. Now it's called the the. Disney Studios in Florida. And I always go down every year with my family for New Year's. So I suggested to Henson, you know, I'm going to be down there for New Year's. Why don't you send Bear down with my Wrangler, my dresser? And we'll just test the waters to see if an attraction would be popular down there. Mm -hmm. They said, you'd be willing to do that on your vacation? I was like, yeah. So they did. They sent Bear down. And I got to, and they thought the studios was the best theme park for Bear. Oh, I remember the, that, yes. Yes, the Magic Kingdom, Epcot, the Animal Kingdom, and the studios. And they thought the studios would be better because I there was a, a TV show. And also at that time, the studios kind of needed like mm -hmm. a little bit of something. Actually, it was before the, I think it was before, it was before the Animal Kingdom showed up. So they thought the studios would be the best thing. And so I got dressed in the bear. And then there's like this wall between the, the Chinese theater and the entrance to like another part of the park. And so Bear just stepped out and like stood in front of the wall. And that's it. And as people started walking by, that's when they looked and they did, did, did like a double take. And then they started running over to see, to see Bear. And because it was me, I said, hi, how are you? And just started talking to, to the kids and talking to the, to, to the families. This park person comes over and leans into Bear and says, you're not supposed to talk. Mm. And Bear turns to him and says, what? And the person looks up at Bear and says, you're not supposed to talk. And Bear said, yes, I can. Watch me. And just turned his back and kept talking. And that's when the person went over to like the people who were with me, the, the, the Disney rep and the person from Henson. And the cast member said, he's, he's not supposed to talk. And they said, no, it's OK. He, he's Bear he's from Bear in the Big Little House. And the guy still said, no, but he's not supposed to talk. The characters don't talk. And they said, no, it's the bear from the show. He can talk. <laughs> and so I met the families. And just before I left, then the cast member wanted his own picture with the bear. It's like, sure, of course. <laughs> how did it come around for there to be a segment within the Playhouse Disney show at Disney Florida with Bear and his friends? Oh, there was like a little, there, there's um, this company, it was called um, V Corp. Mm -hmm. And they created all those big, huge live arena shows like Sesame Street Live. And, you know, um, and so before they created the Bear in the Big Blue House live show, mm -hmm. they did like a test. And so they created like a little show that mm -hmm. went around to malls yes. and just to see if like, if it would be interesting. And again, like it just was a huge hit. And mm -hmm. so, uh, Disney, the studios, just bought that set. They bought the mall set and just put it into one of their um, uh, studios at the at the studios, one of their spaces. And it was it was it was a huge hit. It was like mm -hmm. people loved seeing. It was called Bear in the Big Bear in the Big House Live on stage. Yes. And it ran for a couple of years until somebody at Disney thought, you know, this is really popular. And we've got these other shows on Disney Channel. Mm -hmm. So let's maybe 
rework the show and they did so that bear began the show and he ended the show and then they shoehorned in all these other stories of all these yes, other characters <laughs> yeah and just like and then bear would come back at the end so they uh so they but that showed how popular bear was to draw them in and like help promote you know the other um the other stories so what sparked you to get into your sector of work oh yes because uh <laughs> I have an unusual job. Um, when I was a kid, there was much more uh, puppet shows on TV. That yes. You could actually go to YouTube now and just like type in and just like look up people like Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop and Captain Kangaroo and uh, Mr. Rogers, um, oh, Bill yes. Laird, who was a marionettist. And most people know him from The Sound of Music because there's that segment when the Von Trapps are doing the marionette show. Mm -hmm. And it's actually oh, Bill yes. Cora Baird doing the marionetting and it's their characters. And so I grew up with like a lot of puppets. But then there was uh, a special talking about this brand new show coming on tomorrow morning. It was called Sesame Street. I had never seen puppets like that before that were uh, so soft because usually puppets are like carved or they were like sock puppets. And then when I saw Big Bird, a puppet that could actually walk around and talk and not hide behind something that was just amazing mm -hmm. so when i was in high school that was the height of the muppet show mm -hmm. and so i thought well jim henson and these people are making a living doing this maybe i could too mm -hmm. and so i did research uh the old-fashioned way i went to the library <laughs> which is like which is like a bookstore but it's free and i found two colleges um, that that had a um, puppetry course in them. Oh, wow. And one was here in uh, Brooklyn, New York, uh, called Pratt Institute. And I realized the word Pratt over there means something totally different, but <laughs> here is just somebody's last name. And so within that was a, uh, the theater department. I became a theater major. And within the theater curriculum was a puppetry course. And it was taught by one of the designers and builders of the Muppets. And he built and designed Big Bird and Snuffy, Mr. Snuffleupagus. Yes. And his name was Kermit Love. And no, the frog was not named after him. It's just one of those weird, freaky coincidences. <laughs> but I started learning from him. And then I would work during the summers at his shop, refeathering Big Bird. <laughs> and so, then he offered me a job as his assistant on Sesame Street, taking care of the puppets. And then from there, I transitioned to being wow. a background uh, puppeteer and started working on other shows that, again, you could look up on YouTube. I'm proud to say that my resume is most people's childhood memory. So it's really easy just like, what has he done? Well, I did a show called uh, Eureka's Castle, which was on Nickelodeon, uh, a show called uh, Ubi, a show called uh, Between the Lions. I was in the movie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Wow. <laughs> um, I was Raphael, but I wasn't inside Raphael. It takes five people to do a turtle for those movies. Okay. It's like there's the puppeteer who does all the remote control, like facial movements and lip sync. There's the actor inside actually physically moving. Mm -hmm. Then there's the stunt double in case the turtle has to like, fall off a horse. Mm -hmm. There's the martial artist for all the fighting. And then mm -hmm. when all the principal photography, all the filming is done, they take it back to Hollywood and an actor sits in a chair and dubs his voice over my voice so that it's like the turtle voice. So it takes about five people. So I've done stuff. I also did a show called Between the Lions, which was like a show about reading. And, and then uh, Bear came along. So. And I've been reading up and I've heard that Bear has been a very, very significant character to a lot of young people with disabilities and all that so why do you think that is um it's because bear is it's it's a very gentle show it's a very yes. sincere show it's not too loud it's not in your face it's not frantic movement and colors and lighting and all that it's very it's a very sweet show it's it was one of those rare kid shows that was you know a half an hour you know like 22 minutes like mm -hmm. From beginning to end it was like one story where the writers because i also wrote for the show so mm -hmm. there was this term called bearus interruptus where bear pretty much has something he wants to do he has an agenda 
even mm -hmm. if it's just one thing. And he introduces it at the top of the show when you come when you come in, and then periodically he gets interrupted by one of his little friends, like wanting something or needing something or asking something, until finally he does get it done, possibly with their help. And then he goes upstairs and like relates his day to the moon. <laughs> um, and so it was just a very, very sweet, yes. gentle show that uh, a lot of uh, kids with autism and special needs related to. And I've gotten a lot of fan email from the parents who have thanked me for the show mm -hmm. and have said that their kids often still will, will watch it, even though they're grown up, they'll watch it on DVD or the few VHS tapes that you still have. I think I have a VHS and... somewhere, but I can't find it. <laughs> and uh, so, so they, they still watch the show. So it made me think that there isn't a show like that right now. So I've been trying to develop one of my own. And so it's on YouTube, it's a channel. The Show Me Show. The Show Me Show. Yes. And it's kind of like, uh, I call it educational vaudeville. And vaudeville was kind of like the Muppet Show. So if the Muppet Show had a curriculum, it would kind of, that would be kind of the, the show me show. And so I have like little segments right now, mm -hmm. but ultimately I want it to be an actual full blown show for, for people. And you've also got your podcast of your short stories on Spotify and <laughs> iTunes and lots of others. Oh yeah, the things you do during a lockdown. So it was just like, um, always wondered like, oh, well, what, what happened was there was um, last year, I did a little TikTok with Bear saying the last few lines of Midsummer Night's Dream to celebrate uh, the birth of William Shakespeare, who also died on his birthday. A lot of people don't know that. So you're celebrating the day he died and the day he was born. Mm -hmm. And so there was like this whole thing for the Royal Shakespeare uh, uh, um, company and they were, asking people around the world to like, you know, do a little Shakespeare. So Bear did his and they actually gave it a thumbs up on the TikTok. And uh, it made me realize I really miss like reading out loud because I always used to like read out loud to my son for bedtime, mm -hmm. but that's over. So then I thought, well, maybe I could do it as a podcast because people, after they heard Bear and saw Bear saying, oh, I, Bear could read the phone book and I would, love hearing it so i thought okay so considering that his voice and my voice are very similar i started this podcast called noel's book nook where i just like read public domain stories that a lot of people uh probably weren't even aware were actual stories before they were movies so i've read like the, the little mermaid i read two chapters from the wizard of oz um and then other stories, short stories, like the ones of Beatrix Potter, which are great. Um, this past holiday season, I read from a chapter from um, the same man who wrote The Wizard of Oz and the Oz books, L. Frank Baum. He wrote The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. So I read a chapter from The Life and Adventures of, of Santa Claus. And so it's, it was, it's been really fun. So coming up this year, I'm gonna go back and do like a second season and like more, more stories, but they have to be public domain because the thing is, if they're not, then you have to pay like a, a right yeah. or get permission to like to, to read it. And I respect that. So, but there are so many stories that are public domain, like the like pretty much every fairy tale you could think of is public domain. And authors like um, Mary Shelley, I read like like Frankenstein, um, Robert Louis Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, like all of uh, Lewis Carroll is like public domain. So you can just like read these things and they've been really fun. I've gotten nice responses from people. So, so in doing these nice winter months, if you want to like listen to a story read by a guy that kind of sounds like a bear, then go to Noel's book nook. <laughs> now, what species of bear would you say bear is? Um, bear is like a brown bear. He's like a, like, I guess an American brown bear. Yes. Um, but he's a, uh, kind of sort of like evolved up so that he you know stands upright and actually pays a mortgage and <laughs> and talks <laughs> and dances. Yeah. So yeah, but he's like I guess an American brown bear. So that was always the the nice thing whenever I did the uh, any kind of appearance. 
uh, Bear would meet all these kids and all these families. And my wife said, it's kind of like being Superman because as soon as I got out, I would walk out and then walk past these same people who had no idea who I was mm -hmm. and what I just did. And so she always liked that too, that, that nice little, little anonymity that, uh, that comes with it. So, but I almost got uh, busted when I did a, an appearance in the UK because at one point I started talking to this little girl as me mm -hmm. and she said, like, you sound like Bear. <laughs> And I was like, whoops. <laughs> so I heard you put a thermometer in your suit at one point. How um, hot did it get at some point? Oh, yeah. People ask me, like, how hot does it get in there? And uh, I would say it's a, it's a dry heat. I put a, like a little thermometer and I put it on the back mm -hmm. of the harness that I wore. And, it, and uh, it got to like around 92 degrees in there. Wow. Yeah. And Bear weighed, weighed about uh, something like 70 pounds, but it was all off. It was, it was, it was so well crafted by the, the people of the Jim Henson Company. They're, they're true artists. And so <laughs> Bear was just like a harness I wore. And he actually came in two. It was the top half and then it was the bottom half. So it was all off the hip. So I never felt that kind of weight at all. And I put my right arm up through his neck into his head and my left hand was in his left hand. Mm -hmm. And so in order to make sure that I didn't pass out, they would keep the studio, like they would just crank up the air conditioning. And that first season, like people were complaining, like it's so cold in the studio. And, they, and it was like, well, we have to, to keep from the guy in the bear suit from passing out. So at the end of the first season, the wrap gift that was given to everybody with these re really cool fleece jackets and they had the logo on it. So this way, mm -hmm. next season, when you came back to the show, you could wear your fleece jacket and not complain about how <laughs> cold the yes. studio was. <laughs> so how did you transition from your, everyone, you would have had a job before you were on the Jim Henson company. So how did you transition from that job to go into the Jim Henson company? Um, I really didn't have like, like a job, like a fast food job or like a delivery job. I really went from like a high, from a, I mean, I did like during college, I did like, you know, puppet shows on the side, during mm -hmm. funny, but it was always puppet related. Mm -hmm. And so I had uh, the job of, of uh, being what's called the wrangler on mm -hmm. Sesame Street. So the wrangler is the person who takes care of the puppets and makes sure the puppets are neat and like ready, the camera ready. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was my job. And then um, I started to like transition out of that. There was a, a day when um, they actually let one of the puppeteers uh, go early mm -hmm. and there was nobody around. And they said, no, could you do it? And I was like, okay. Cool. And I was like one of the elephant trunks. I was only one of Oscar's elephants, like the trunk coming up. And so I did it. And so from there, that's when I started to like to transition out of it. And so uh, became more of like a, a background puppeteer. And so I became like, what's called like a, a right hand. There's um, a kind of puppet called a practical hand puppet. Ernie's mm -hmm. a practical hand puppet, Cookie Monster, The Count, where the principal puppeteer does the head and the left hand. And then the right hand, you just put your hand in and then you gesture along to make it look like the character has both hands moving, but you don't want to do too much because you don't want to have like it overshadow the, yes. the character. So I started doing, so I'm in a, a segment on a, you can look it up on YouTube. It's a Sesame Street called uh, the Batty Bat. And it's a song that the, and dance that the Count did. Mm -hmm. And the Count was originally created by Jerry Nelson. Mm -hmm. And so Richard Hunt, who was one of the other principal performers on Sesame, he told me for this, uh, right-handed for Jerry, just stick your thumb through his belt loop in the back and just hang on. And that's what he did because we're actually, we have to like waltz around like this little set. I think I've seen that. Yeah. And so I've that, I did that. And then, then I was Richard right hand for his character named Forgetful Jones, mm -hmm. who was a cowboy for this uh, bit called uh, Eek Lahoma, where mm -hmm. his character has to sing the 
the theme of Oklahoma, but he keeps forgetting. By today's standards, forgetful would have short-term memory loss. Yes. But back in the 80s, it was just comedy to instantly forget what you were just told. <laughs> so, so I got to be the right hand. And that's a bit that has Jim doing Kermit, the mm -hmm. frog in it. And it's hysterical because Kermit just finally just like loses it completely. Um, and it's a good example of, I use it when I teach um, puppeteers uh, about acting because puppetry is acting. We just act yes. this up. And it's like, that's a great bit in terms of like pacing, of mm -hmm. timing, of the fact that you're part of a scene. So even though you're a cow or a horse in the background, you just can't bring the puppet down because you're not in the shot or you're tired. You have to keep it up and just, you have to keep going. And so it's a great example of like it, uh, the scene, it's not about you, you're part of the scene. Um, so yeah, so I started transitioning out of that. And then the, we did the movie Sesame Street Presents Follow That Bird. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was like um, my first big character. And I got to be a, a character in the beginning that kind of sets up the story. Her name is Madame Cherbourg. And mm -hmm. Madame Cherbourg was part of the Feather Friends Society. It's like goody two shoes society thinking that birds belong with bird families and they've heard of Big Bird and he should be placed in a part of like a um, bird family. And, so, and then I, I was also uh, Carol, who was the original Big Bird and my mentor. I was his like understudy and stand in for certain shots. So that was great. And we did that in Toronto, Canada. So I got to spend the, the summer of 1984 in Toronto. So if a young person said, hi, Neil, <laughs> hi, Neil, how do you get into puppetry? What would you say? Uh, First of all, can I see your eyes? Because you're, <laughs> you can, you can tip your hand down. I didn't see your eyes. I see your eyes. There it is. There you go. Okay. Uh, cute. Um, I would say, like, do what you're just doing now. Just, like, start making a puppet and, like, start playing around with, with a puppet and go on YouTube and see examples of good puppetry. Um, mm -hmm. Like um, Sesame Street, uh, The Muppet Show. Uh, there's Fraggle Rock. Yes. Uh, there's there's this bear in the big blue house, um, and then just um, just start seeing what they're doing because see you have the luxury of having that reference and resource that you can just pull up. And now I've taught like so many people around the world for the co-productions with Sesame Street um, how to be a puppeteer, but I didn't have that. I had to actually, I had to watch Jim and Frank and mm -hmm. Jerry and Fran Brill and Carol and just see how they were doing it and then try it myself. And so it just takes, and, you, and um, just to gain the mechanics, it, it's practice, like practicing a, an instrument. It's like, you just practice, you know. So what's your three top tips then? Three top tips. Well, it's like when I teach people puppetry, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like number one, it's like, mm -hmm. like you just wanna move your thumb, you just wanna move this part because this part is, this part of your mouth. You don't want to do this because mm -hmm. we couldn't see the puppet's eyes. Mm -hmm. And in real life, we don't talk like this. <laughs> so, yes. just, so just move your thumb. It's like number two, mm -hmm. the lip sync is like, you're not picking oranges. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Like imagine each number is like jammed in your mouth. Mm -hmm. so, so you're just gently spitting it out. One two, three, four, five, six, but seven, you gotta do twice because it's two syllables, mm -hmm. seven. Yeah, so if you just concentrate on mm -hmm. using your thumb and just gently throw it mm -hmm. away, then it'll be fine. And you'll, I mean, this will move anyway, but you really just wanna move your, move mm -hmm. your thumb. I think a little exercise you can do is you can, um, like when you're sitting, mm -hmm. like put your hand under the table and then start talking because then I'll just like <laughs> isolate your upper fingers from moving and it'll just train your thumb just to move. It's muscle memory. Yes. That's what it is. It's just muscle memory. So that, you know, by the time my age, you won't even think about it. It just happens. It just, you just do it. <laughs> Are you working on any new projects just now that you're allowed to talk about? Um, yeah, it's like 
Um, I'm still developing a, a show me show, uh, got my little podcast. I'm actually going to be performing and directing three segments for Sesame Street. Oh, wow. Week. Yes. So that's exciting. Yes. And I also have uh, an agreement with the Jim Henson Company, and we are developing uh, a new kids show, but I can't say what it is yet, but we're busy doing that, and we'll hopefully be pitching it uh, this year to uh, networks. And Will it so, be similar to Bear in the Big Blue House? Um, when it's friendly for everyone and for... Oh, yeah. It'll be friendly for, every, it'll be friendly for everybody. It'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be entertaining. There'll be music. Uh, maybe, maybe even some dancing. Uh, yeah, so that'll be hopefully um, happening this year in terms of pitching. We had a plan last year, but you know, mm -hmm. something happened. So <clears throat> some things got put on hold, but now we're like back in. Actually, the Jim Henkinson, the company, uh, the guys I know, and mm -hmm. that includes the women, um, they're in Calgary, Canada right now. Why? Yes, and they are rebooting Fraggle Rock. So there'll oh, be I've... brand new episodes of Fraggle Rock coming to Apple. Uh, I have TV. seen some of them. Yeah, it's brand new episodes, brand new season of Fraggle Rock coming. And they're doing it right now in Calgary. Wow. And in and Canada, is, so. I was wondering for the next segment on DYW Newski with Aiden, is Bear there so we can play a short game with them? Sure. Hold on one second. <laughs> Oh, bear. Yes. <laughs> hey, Aiden. How are you? <laughs> How are you, Bear? Can we play I'm a good. game today, Bear? Of course. I would love to play a game. What would you like to play? Could I give you a topic and then the two of us discuss it with the young people? Sure. Go ahead. Fire away. So could we... we I'll use a random generator on my phone and then we can pick, we can see what comes up and then we choose that topic and we educate the young people with that. Okay. Sounds I will good. have a look just now. All right. You have a look. I'll get more settled. Wait. Okay. Could we please do the importance of um, taking time off of your screens for breaks during your education? Oh yes, absolutely. You need, excuse me. <clears throat> you need to always just like take a break uh, after this, of course, and you know go outside or read a book or play some music mm -hmm. or sing a song, make your own music, mm -hmm. or you could bake or you could cook or you could talk to a friend or talk to your family or talk to your your pet if you have a pet, and you know just. Just give your eyes a rest from the, the screen and look around you at the, at the world around you. Because the world can be a really cool, fascinating place. And also, we've got one last game. Could, could okay. I randomly generate a song and then from the name of the song, we come up with a short story? Sure. Let's see if I can find a song. Okay. Let's see. No. Let's see. Coming this by. The song is by... called the song is called the bear cha cha cha. Oh, that old chestnut. Okay, sure. Well, the bear cha 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 is actually an, an, a traditional dance that I learned when I was a cub. I wasn't always bear. Once upon a time, I was cub, and it was taught to me by my mama bear and papa bear, who learned it from their mama bear and papa bear. So it's been passed on from generation to generation, and I get to share it with you. And you did that song in London, didn't you? I did, in Trafalgar Square. If you go to the TikTok, there's actually a little scene of me from that time in Trafalgar Square and all over London doing the bear cha-cha-cha. So for young people that don't know what we're talking about, how does the bear cha-cha-cha go? <laughs> ah, well, first you, you, you tap your feet, you tap your feet, and then you wait, one like, second, one second, okay, one second. Yes, yes. I'm going to, I'm going to see. So you, there you go. yeah, tap your feet. Yeah, you tap your feet. There you go. And then you kind of like wiggle your hips. And then you kind of like wiggle your hips. Wiggle your hips. Wiggle your hips. 
And then you you stamp your feet, you go cha-cha-cha, and you cha, throw your cha, head back. Cha. Yes, you throw your head back, and then use your arms too. You're like cha-cha-cha, <laughs> like cha, that. Cha, cha. Like cha-cha-cha. And cha, then you, cha. yeah, and then you spread your legs and kind of wiggle your knees and go ooh-la-la. Ooh-la-la. Yeah, there you go. And then one more time, you go cha-cha-cha. Cha-cha-cha. <laughs> and that is the bear cha-cha-cha. And that is the bear cha-cha-cha. That's it. So can I ask <laughs> you, you a few questions? The Magnificent Bear, can I ask you a few questions? Sure. Come in a bit closer. Closer. You're smelling very good today, Aiden, by the way. That, oh, that has have made been, my day, my week, my month. You are amazing, Bear. Have you been eating hobnobs? Because you smell like hobnobs. Ooh, maybe you smell ah! this chocolatey good all the time. I had some hobnobs the other day. Ha ha! I knew it! <laughs> wow. Now, what's your favorite type of music just now, Bear? Oh, well, I like all kinds of music, really. Anything that makes me feel good. So I like rock and a little pop, a little country, a little bit of country, and a little bit of rock and roll. Also, classical music is very good, too. Like Berlioz is one of the nicest composers I can think of. Do you enjoy dancing to the music, Bear? I do, exactly. Getting up and moving, which is a great form of exercise, by the way. Yes. Just getting up and dancing is a great form of exercise. So I recommend, recommend it to anybody who wants to stay in shape. And if the rhythm is going to get you, go for it. So who's your best friend then, Bear? Oh, I have a lot of best friends. Of course, there's Tutter, and there's Pip yes. and Pop, and there's Ojo, and Trilo, yes. and of course, my friend Luna at night. But then, of course, my friend Ray, the sun, in the daytime. And, and what of about course, Shadow? Is Shadow your friend? Oh, yes, absolutely. Shadow's great. Shadow's wonderful. Shadow's so, Irish, by the way. I don't know if you knew that, but what? she's Irish. Yes. No. Oh, <laughs> yes, she is. She, yes, she's Irish. And so she has this wonderful song, the Shadow's Lullaby, which I think you can see on YouTube. And it's yes. a lovely song. And of course, one of my very best friends is you, which oh. is why I was always glad when you would come by the Big Blue House. Thank you very much. And can you tell young people why it is most important to feel happy, safe, and connect with others in this time? Well, yes, this is a very unusual time, and that's an understatement, but <laughs> it is, is important to stay safe, to stay healthy, and to stay happy. Because if we can do all that together, we will get through this together. So it's always good make sure that you know you're you're staying safe because that'll keep others safe and keep you safe and then if you can do something to make somebody happy just mm -hmm. one little thing each day to make somebody happy well then we all will get through this for instance me talking to you today that was one thing i wanted to make sure happened because i was hoping this would make you happy right so are you a honey you do, you, do you like honey of course i'm a bear so is that it's something that makes you happy? Oh, absolutely. As, as, as you can tell, it's like, there's very few foods that don't make me happy. But yes, honey is one of them. Yes. And dancing and singing and talking to friends and talking to the moon at night and saying hi to the sun in the morning and drawing and reading. Many, 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 many things. So what inspires you to inspire others? Oh, well, I guess it would be just be the best you you can be because there is nobody, nobody else in the world doing a better job of being you than you. So keep up the good work. So Bear, what's your greatest achievement? Um, let's see. Well, I would say um, my big blue house. I love my big blue house. I love that too. And being able to share it with all my friends and with you. So I think the fact that people remember coming to the Big Blue House when they were little, and there are many of them who are now coming back with their kids, which shows how old I am. But- How old are you, Bear? Oh, well, in Bear years, it's hard to tell. It's kind of like converting it from like dog years. But <laughs> let's just say I'm a very grown up bear. Yes, yes. And can you suggest a way for young people <clears throat> to cope throughout this time? Well, I would say, uh, listen, listen to the people in charge and, you know, like the doctors, 
and your parents and because they have your best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. So it really helps to wear a mask when it's time to wear a mask, to do the whole social distancing thing, and to make sure that if you're not feeling well, stay home, get mm -hmm. under the covers, snuggle in, and get better as soon as you can while not making anybody else sick. Apart from the bear in the big blue house, what type of TV shows or movies does Bear enjoy? Oh, well, I happen to have Disney Plus. <laughs> hey! And, there you go. And so I, I love I love all the Marvel shows. I don't know if you've been watching this show called WandaVision. Yes. It is very good. Yes, very it trippy, is. But very good. Also, like, um, there's this great cartoon called Gravity Falls. Oh, yes. In a, a little town in the woods. Yes. And then all... And the classics, my favorite movie of all time, Mary Poppins. Oh, wow. Original. Wow. What's your Love favorite song then, Bear? Oh, my favorite song? Oh, well, that's, that's hard to tell. It's like so many great songs. Well, from the, from the movie Mary Poppins, I guess my favorite song would be uh, Feed the Birds. Yes. Do you ever blink, Bear? Um, not really, no. I've had a lot of coffee this morning, so I haven't blinked in a while. So I could try. It's like, nope, the caffeine's kicked <laughs> in. <laughs> this is the closest uh, I can blink now. Is this? That's it. So, what have you been doing during lockdown to cheer up your family, your friends? Oh, been visiting, been visiting Noel when I can, and going on the TikTok, and doing the cameos, and helping people out there feel a little bit better, and um, well, pretty much uh, staying busy, staying active, while still staying safe. Keeping, keep, um, staying home when I can, and have I have this bubble? Noel's part of the bubble, you know that whole safety bubble that yes. you can create. And of course, my friends at home—they're part of my bubble. So, I've been keeping busy and getting to talk to people like you. So, and this was great. This was really great, Ethan. Thank you. So, Bear, when you do your shows, do you? Do you live with your bear family or do you live with your family with Luna and all the others? Oh, yes. I head back to the big blue house and hang out with, with the gang. In fact, I can't wait to tell Luna I got to talk to you tonight. Wow. I was wondering, Bear, just before we say goodbye to you, could we do a duet of a song that I think you know, which is sure. our favorite song? Sure. So I was wondering, could you be Bear and I be Luna? Sure. I've had much practice at being bare, so it shouldn't be too hard. On you go. Three, two, one. Hey, this was really fun. We hope you liked it, too. Seems like we've just begun when and suddenly, suddenly we're, we're through. through. Goodbye, goodbye, good friends, goodbye. Because now, now it's, it's time, time to go. But hey, I say, well, that's okay. Cause we'll see you very soon, I know. Very soon, I know. Goodbye, 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 goodbye friends, friends, goodbye. goodbye and tomorrow, goodbye, just like today. today. The moon, the, moon, the, the bear, bear, and the big blue house, house will be waiting, waiting for, you for you to come and play, to come and play, to come, come and, and play. play. Bye now. Now it has been the most wonderful pleasure to meet Bear and all the viewers will have loved to meet you. You're the most magnificent and wonderful legend that has cheered up and made people's lives the greatest. Without you, I don't know where we would be. Let's have another round of applause. Thank you for the amazing Bear. Oh, thank you for thank some you. questions, thank Bear. You. Thank you, Aiden. I'll, I'll let Noel say his goodbyes too. It was great seeing you and everybody out there and Keep smelling good. Thank you, Bear. And as Bear said, everyone, please keep smelling good. Hello, hey. Noel, again. Thank you ever so Hello. much again for coming on DYW Newscape with me, Aiden. And we have been 
the most one I don't know how to say goodbye to this because we have just had the most greatest <laughs> opportunity that I don't think anyone will ever have again is to meet the legend of Jim Henson Company, Noel <laughs> McNeil, for this Thank special you. episode of DYW Newscape. And I don't know if you know Noel, but in 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 England we we go by we go by hands, face and space. They're the three acronyms we go by to keep safe. And in Scotland, we go by facts. And each one means a different thing to try and keep us remembering to stay safe, to wash our hands, to to get tested and to trace others, to stay isolated, to keep space, to not go into shops if we don't need to. And I would like to let Noel say a few goodbye words and then we'll say goodbye. Uh... Yes. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say, by the way, thanks to uh, Facebook and Ancestry.com uh, DNA, that uh, I am actually half Scottish. And my great great grandfather is actually from Scotland. He oh, came what? from a, a town came from a town called Perth before oh, I... coming to the United States. <laughs> so and my family, I got to actually go to Scotland um, in the summer of uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. because I was part of the Muppets at the, the, the O2 in yes. London. And then after that, we all scattered to the four corners of Europe and the UK. So my family and I went to uh, Erisig and stayed at a lovely place called Erisig House in the Scottish Highlands, which was great. So I can't wait to come back to Scotland again and come to travel in general. So until then, I hope you all stay safe, uh, stay sound. Uh, here is like, you know, remind people wear a mask. Actually on TikTok, Bear and I remind people like wear a mask, like mm -hmm. to cover it, not only your mouth, but your nose. <laughs> um, yes, practice social distancing. If you don't have to go traveling, don't. If you don't have to go into a, a shop, don't. But when you do, wear your mask, uh, practice social distancing, wash your hands. That's another little TikTok Bear did early on about washing your hands for 20 minutes and you can sing a song. Yes, and which song it. is that? Well, it was the, happened to be the goodbye song. So yeah. like, you know, it was in brand. Um, yeah, and so hopefully we'll, we, we'll get through this much, much sooner by doing all of this and getting the vaccine. And uh, until then, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, keep having fun. <laughs> DYW Newscape with Aiden. This has been the legend of the Jim Henson Company, No, and we're signing off saying goodbye.